afternoon, Kansas City. I've got something of great importance I urgently need to share with you. you just give me five minutes of your time. I'm not trying to talk about pie in the sky, wishful thinking, or cunningly devised fables. I'm not here to try to get you to join anything or sign up for anything. It's not about joining up with nothing. I'm not trying to solicit your money. I don't need your money. I've got a day job. I'm out here today to tell you about real evidence for the existence of a God who indeed sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into the world to be beaten, to be bruised, and to die on a wooden cross, to pay the penalty for yours and my sin, who indeed rose again on the third day, just as the Gospels say, which means that yours and my very lives hang in the balance and depend on what we do with this Jesus, the blessed Holy One of God. You see, the Bible says all we like sheep have gone astray. Every one of us have turned our own way. You say, I'm a good person. Why would God send me to hell? Well, by my standards, you're probably much better than me, but I'm not the judge. You see, James 2.10 tells us if you've ever repented one part of the law, you're a lawbreaker and guilty before God. What that means is just one sin, one time is all it takes to send you on a path to destruction. Did you know it doesn't matter whether it happened four minutes ago or 40 years ago? Would it, if you ever sinned against the holy God, you're a sinner just like me. And you need a Savior. God gave us the commandments to, to reveal to us that we are sinners. God didn't give us the Ten Commandments to keep the commandments. He gave us the Ten Commandments to reveal we've already blown it. For example, it says, Thou shalt not lie. Did you know little white lies, half-truths, or exaggerations all count as a lie? You say, well, preacher, that's no big deal. Everybody lies. Well, it's a big deal to God in Revelation. He says that all liars shall have their place in the lake of fire. It says, thou shalt not steal. Because you know it doesn't matter whether you were, took a ballpoint pen or robbed a bank. If you ever took something that didn't belong to you in God's sight, you're a thief. Now i got four fingers pointed back at me if I point one at you because I'm the chief of all sinners this afternoon. It says, thou shalt not commit adultery. But Jesus showed us that that's a heart condition. He said, Whosoever even looks upon a woman with lust has committed adultery with her already in his heart. So that would mean just looking at pornography makes you an adulterer before a holy God. It says, thou shalt not kill. You say, well, there's one I got. I never killed nobody. Well, Jesus showed us that's a heart condition too. He said, you've heard thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill will be in danger of the judgment. But he said, I tell you, whoever's angry with his brother without just cause will be in danger of the judgment. What was he saying? He was saying that losing your temper without just cause is equivalent to murder in the sight of a holy God. How many of you know that makes us all a bunch of serial killers here today in the corner of 47th and Broadway? That's only four of the Ten Commandments. God's got six more like cannons pointed right at us, ready to go off and reveal our sin. Paul said, I would not have known sin were it not for the law. So God gave us the law to reveal that we are sinners. We have transgressed God's law. Romans 6.23 says the penalty for our sin is death. That's eternal separation from God in a place called hell. You say, well, I don't believe in a God that would send somebody to hell for all eternity. Well, Jesus told us about hell. Did you know Jesus warned us more about hell than he did tell us about heaven when he was here? It's true. Jesus wanted us to know. He wanted us to know that hell was so serious. He said, it's so serious if your hand causes you to sin, you'd be better off to cut your hand off and enter into heaven. With only one hand in the flames of hell where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched with both hands. He said it's so serious if your eye is causing you to sin. You'd be better off to pluck your eye out and enter into heaven with only one eye. Than the flames of hell where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. So Jesus told us about this place called hell. And I believe with tears in his eyes he said this next verse. He said, the day is coming when he shall have to send forth his angels and gather out of this kingdom 
all things that offend and them which commit iniquity and cast them into a furnace of fire. So Jesus warned us there was a time of judgment coming. There's a time where we will have to face God. But the good news of the gospel is you don't have to be found guilty. Don't you know you can be found innocent due to lack of evidence? If you let Jesus come in, you see Romans 6.23 says the penalty for our sin is death. That's eternal separation from God in a place called hell. But the next part of that verse, God put a but in there. It says, but the free gift of God is everlasting life in Christ Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Don't you know everlasting life is available today in Jesus Christ? I'm not talking about religion today. I'm not asking you if you go to communion or mass or confession. I'm not asking if you sing the doxology or pray the rosary. I'm asking do you have a personal living relationship with Jesus Christ? He said, except a man shall be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Being born again isn't some strange, odd phenomenon, some weird supernatural thing. It's a moment in your life when you just threw open the flood doors of your heart and you invited Jesus to come in and become Lord of your life. That happened in my life in 1990. I was an alcoholic, a drug addict. Jesus came in and changed my life for all eternity. And I'm living proof that Jesus Christ changed his lives. I'm not talking about religion today. I'm not asking you to join a church. Did you know you could join my church and still wind up in hell? It's not about quitting, drinking, smoking, or cussing. Did you know you, you could go to hell sober? You've got to know Jesus. You say, well, preacher, are you saying God's going to send me to hell if I don't receive Jesus? <laughs> you know what that's like? That's like saying you're out in the middle of the ocean, you're drowning, and the Coast Guard swoops in and he tosses your rope and say, oh, so you're saying if I don't grab your rope, I'm going to drown. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's the way it works, folks. Jesus is our lifeline. He's our only way. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And then he put his money where his mouth is when he conquered sin, death, and the grave and rose again. I don't serve a stuffy dead religion today. I serve a risen Savior. I want you to know there's hope in Jesus Christ. It's not in Buddha. It's not in Muhammad. It's not in Hare Krishna. It's in Jesus. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And then he put his money where his mouth is when he rose from the dead. I got good news and I got bad news for you today, my friends. You see, the good news is Jesus is coming back. But the bad news is Jesus is coming back. <laughs> You see, it's good news for those of us that are looking for Him and that love Him, but it's bad news for those of you who aren't. You see, the Bible tells us He's coming first to catch away His church, and then He's going to pour out His judgment upon a world that refuses to repent of their sin. The Bible foretold 333 prophecies, the manner in which He would come the first time. It predicted a holy one. It said He'd be born in the Jewish lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob. It said He'd be born in the town of Bethlehem, born of a virgin mother. It prophesied, the prophets were told that He would begin His ministry on the shores of Galilee. The prophets were told hundreds of years before Jesus was even born that He would be rejected by His own people. Isaiah himself said he will be wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. And by his stripes we will be healed. You see, Jesus fulfilled the prophecies. The prophets foretold Zechariah said he'd be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. Think of it. Hundreds of years before Jesus was even born, the prophets wrote these things would take place. And just as we saw, they take, took place in the Gospels. The prophets were told when the Holy One comes that He would be treated like a common criminal as we saw when He hung on a cross between two thieves. The prophets were told that His executioners would gamble for His clothing as He suffered and died. My favorite prophecy, Psalm 16 verse 10, says the Holy One would not stay in the grave long enough to see corruption. It was a prediction of the resurrection. Don't you know, I don't serve a stuffy dead religion. I serve a risen Savior. So this book told us 333 times the manner in which He would come 
the first time and he came exactly the way that it said with the same book told us another 1500 times that he's coming back he's coming back for people that are looking for him and that love him the events we see happening in the world around us were literally foretold thousands of years ago for example, Zephaniah 3.8 tells us to watch for gathering together or uniting of the nations. And think about this. In 1945, for the first time in history, the United Nations was formed. In Matthew 24.7, Jesus gives us several birth pains or signs, if you will, that we are in the last days. He told us to watch for... World War. Now think about this for a second. World War never existed in history before my grandfather's lifetime. Here Jesus said, whole nation will rise against whole nation and kingdom against kingdom. And then he told us that there would be an increase in sickness and disease. Did you know that many of today's peer-reviewed publications, for example, the, the Journal of the Royal Society, have reported that from 1980 to present that the disease outbreaks worldwide have more than quadrupled. Jesus told us it would be that way. He said in the last days that there would be a great increase in world hunger. Now think about this statistic. From 1999 to 2009, world hunger jumped from only around 500 million to well over a billion in just that short 10-year span. And Jesus said it would be that way in the last days. He also clearly described an increase in earthquake activity. Now think about it. Did you know, here's another statistic. The National Geologic Survey reports that from 1950 to about 19, uh, from 1900 to 1950, uh, the world was only experiencing about, on an average, 25 disastrous earthquakes worldwide per year. From 1950 to present, world, uh, earthquakes have increased from well over 350 to 550 disastrous earthquakes worldwide per year. That's more than a 220% increase. And Jesus said it would be that way in the last days. He also clearly described in the last days the existence of the nation of Israel. Now this prophecy was always something people would use to mock the Bible. Back in the early 1900s, they'd say, well, you know that the Romans destroyed the Jews in A.D. 70 and they haven't existed ever since. And they would mock the Bible and say, that proves it can't be true. But I'd have loved to have seen the look on their faces in 1948. After the overthrow of Adolf Hitler and his Third Reich, the world saw a got a glimpse of the atrocities that he had hoisted upon the Jewish people. They saw the millions of bones in the mass graves. And they were moved with compassion and they made a way for the people of Israel to return to their homeland. For the first time in over 1,800 years, they raised the star of David on the flag over Jerusalem proclaiming their nationality once again. Jesus told us that it would be this way, but if you look in, in, in Ezekiel 37, verses 1 through 14, it makes, makes me get goosebumps when I read it. God said, out of a valley of dry dead bones I will breathe life, and my nation of Israel shall live once again. Don't you know... God predicted that these things would be taking place. What am I saying? I'm saying we're in rapture season, my friend. The Paul himself said the Lord himself would descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up forever to be with the Lord in the air. Don't you know there's a catching away? There's a catching away coming. It's called the rapture. But you don't have to be left behind, my friend. You don't have to. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Did you know you can receive Jesus Christ right now into your heart? You don't have to be in some church sanctuary. You don't have to have somebody waving some weird wand over you with a big tall hat or sprinkling you with water. <coughs> Romans 10 verses 9 and 10 says, If you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. 
And don't you know that's a promise from God? Everlasting life is available. God said in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever will believe in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Did you hear that? It's a whosoever will today. It's a whosoever will. Are you whosoever will today? Are you willing? Are you willing to stand up for Jesus? Are you willing to let Him come into your heart? Become Lord of your life? Time is wrapping up, my friend. Time is wrapping up. It's time to let go and let God become Lord of your life. Let Jesus come in. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. There's not many ways to God. There's one way. Jesus is it. There's only one way. You've got to go through Jesus Christ. He conquered sin, death, and the grave to prove that He was exactly who He claimed to be. And I'm here today to tell you that I'm just a nobody. I'm here to point anybody to somebody. And His name is Jesus. Oh, glory to God. There's life in Jesus Christ today. Why don't you look to Jesus? Why don't you look to Him and have life? In Revelation 3, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. He said, If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, he said, I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. In other words, what Jesus is saying, he's knocking at your heart's door right now. He's knocking at your heart's door. Why don't you quit pretending like nobody's home? Why don't you open the door? Why don't you let Jesus come in? Be Lord of your life. Time is wrapping up. Bible prophecy is happening daily in the news. He's coming back. It's time to get right. Tomorrow is not promised to any man, woman, or child. Tomorrow is not promised, friend. You say, well, tomorrow I'll get right with God. I told a police officer up in Westport, 1992, I said, tomorrow is not promised to anyone. Someone in the sound of my voice is soon to pass into eternity. Now, a police officer just got mad and he threatened to have me arrested and, and tow my vehicle. Did you know that within a week or two of that very conversation on that same corner, that police officer was struck and killed by a drunk driver? My friend, tomorrow is not promised. It's not promised to anyone. It's time. To quit playing with your soul. Quit playing with your soul. Look to Jesus and have life. There's hope in the cross today. That's all I'm here today to tell you. It's good news. It's not about quitting, drinking, smoking, or cussing. You can go to hell sober. It's about making Jesus the Lord of your life. If you ever, if you let Jesus come in and become Lord of your life, and He's really, truly your Lord, your life is going to change. You're not going to want the same things that you that you desire now. Your want to's change. Oh, don't you know I was an alcoholic and my want to's change. I don't need the booze no more. I don't need the drugs no more. Don't you know I found a joy unspeakable and full of glory in Jesus Christ. There's hope in Him. Look to Jesus and have life today. Thank you. God bless you.